In modern Linux, we have this important feature, cgroups. Cgroups is all about resource allocation and reservation and limitation. And systemd is taking care of it. So cgroups or control groups uh, place resources in controllers that represent the type of resource. The most significant default controllers are CPU, memory, and block I.O. And they allow you to work with, well, CPU restrictions, memory restrictions, as well as block I.O. And these controllers are subdivided in a tree structure, where different weights or limits are applied to each branch. Uh, each of these branches is a C group, and one or more processes are assigned to a C group. C groups can be applied from the command line or from systemd. Uh, in the past, you could manually create C groups using the CG config service and the CG red process. Uh, but then we are talking about the early 2000s before uh, systemd became a relevant thing. In all cases, uh, C group settings are written to slash sys slash fs slash C groups. So that's a sys file system that we talked about before, the pseudo file system that is used for managing hardware properties. And that is where you can go if you want to know what is happening under the hood. In a C groups environment, we have slices. And slices are the primary uh, division of your operating system. They apply to CPU, to block I.O., to memory, and there's three of them. The system slice, uh, which is for system processes and daemons. The machine slice, which is for virtual machines, as well as containers. And the user slice, which is for user settings. Every user gets its own slice by default, which perfectly isolates uh, the resources allocated to one user from the resources allocated to another user, and which guarantees that every user has the same claim to system resources. Apart from these default slices, you can also create custom slices. All right, let me make a drawing to explain how the system D slices relate to one another. So we have the system slice. We have the user slice, and there is the machine slice. And these are pairs to one another. And when we talk about uh, C groups, uh, you might be working with CPU shares. And the CPU shares are assigned to the different slices. So if all of the slices have CPU shares of 1024, that is the relative weight uh, between the different slices. That means that at the slice level, if you have full activity in all of the slices, then each slice will get one-third of the available CPU resources. Now, the interesting thing is that within a slice, and that goes for each of these slices, uh, you can work with scopes. And on these scopes, you can set CPU shares as well. So let's say that we have 1024 here and 1024 here, but in a machine slice, uh, we uh, we also have scopes, uh, and maybe in the machine slice we have four of them with 1,024 each. Uh, then this 1,024 relates to this one. So the scopes decide within the slice how much CPU shares they get. Likewise for here. But even if this machine slice has twice the amount of scopes, at the slice level it's still 1,024. So if you have four processes running here in the scopes and two processes running here, this will get half of the CPU resources. And all these processes in the machine slice get half of the CPU resources as well. Within a scope or directly within a slice, uh, you can have the different services or units. And each system, the unit, well, typically that would be a service, uh, would get its CPU share as well. So 1,024 and 512 and 2,048, where the numbers uh, explain a relative weight uh, between these, uh, these different services within the same level, but still within the context of the limitation that applies to the slice, which is within the context of the limitation uh, that applies to the system unit. As a result, uh, some surprising things might be happening. Uh, let's say uh, we have user Bob, and user Bob is starting a process. Now, what do we get? We get a Bob, uh, a Bob slice at that moment. And this Bob slice is you. If user Bob is the only user around, 
uh, then user Bob is starting a very active job. Uh, he will get all the CPU shares within the user slice. And that means that one user is capable of getting an equal amount of CPU shares uh, as all of your units within the system scope. And that's definitely something to be aware of. So let me show you how to use cgroups in a systemd environment. All right, in order to run this demo, uh, you need access to the course Git repository. In case you have not yet installed it, git clone https uh, github.com slash Sander van Vught slash LFCS. And in that course Git repository, you will find stress1.service and stress2.service, which are custom systemd unit files. Uh, so what is in there? Well, stress1.service is a very simple service. Uh, the type is simple and it is running a DD process. And this DD process is going to cause a 100% uh, system load. And CPU shares, that's a parameter that, uh, that this uh, demo is all about. CPU shares is set to 1024. If you have a look at the contents of stress2.service, you can see it's very similar. Uh, with the only difference that CPU shares is set to 2048. Uh, the meaning is that uh, the CPU shares 2048 is getting twice the amount of CPU cycles as the other one. Now, in order to run these custom services, uh, we should copy them to, to the appropriate location, uh, which would be etc systemd system. You remember there's user lib systemd system, uh, that's for uh, unit files that come from packages. So you shouldn't touch them yourself. Uh, there is etc systemd system. Uh, that's for your own stuff. And this is typically uh, my own stuff. Now let's run it. Systemctl start on stress1 as well as stress2. And then let's observe in top what is going on. And what do we see? Well, we see something that might surprise you, and that is that the DD processes are both consuming uh, almost 100%. So we don't see the difference in the CPU shares. And there's a very good reason for that, and that is because this is a multi-CPU system. Let me press 1 from the top interface. Let's have a look at the third line where you can now see CPU 0 and CPU 1. We have multiple CPUs, and that is why this demo seems to be failing. But Fortunately, thanks to the sys sudo file system, there's something that we can do about it. I am going to use echo zero greater than slash uh, sys uh, bus, and then I need uh, CPU devices, CPU one uh, online. Now, what is this? Well, the sys bus CPU devices, CPU one online file, uh, is what you use to uh, enable or disable uh, CPU 1. So if I echo a 0 to that, then suddenly we have a, a 1 CPU system instead of a 2 CPU system. And if we get back to top, uh, I press 1 again from the top interface. Now we can see that indeed there is only 1 CPU and you can also see the C groups in action. So we have one DD process, process getting twice the amount uh, of CPU cycles as the other one. But hey, there is one thing that you need to be aware of. Let me open a new window. And in this new window, let me move it to the lower right corner so that we can still see top in the background. As an ordinary user, I'm going to use while true semicolon do true semicolon done. And now we need to observe what is happening. You see what's happening? Bash process getting about 50% and both DD processes getting about 50% as well. How come? Well, that is for the simple reason uh, that we are in the user slice for this while true, uh, do true thing. And we are in the system slice for the DD processes. And by default, the user slice and the system slice have an equal weight. And that is why one ordinary user process is capable of, uh, of pushing away these other processes. And that's not good. Let me use Ctrl C and let me quit these uh, these things so that we can move forward. Oh, one thing, by the way, uh, I want to use system D, CG for C group. And there we have a C group uh, top and a C group LS. 
So here is a system D CG, uh, CG top, uh, where you can see where the activity is. And you can see clearly indicated stress 2 dot surface and stress 1 dot surface are the most active processes right now. An alternative view is CGLS. CGLS is showing uh, a list of everything that is happening in all of the C groups. This is not convenient for monitoring what's going on right now and which process is busiest, uh, but it is convenient uh, to get an overview of all these different slices uh, and services. Now let me finish this by using kill all on PID of DD. And that should make, make them go away. Back to top. And oh boy, the kill all PID DD didn't work. So let me kill it manually. Uh, well, there is number one and K to kill. And there is number two. And now they are gone. Uh, there's only one thing remaining, and that's a few commands ago. Uh, I offlined my CPU1. Uh, now, by echoing a 1 into Sysbus CPU Devices CPU1 online, uh, I am getting it back online again. Uh, and you can still hear probably my computer making noise because it has been so busy. That will calm down uh, in not too much time uh, because the really uh, occupying processes are now no longer active. As you can see, the load average uh, is already decreasing. It's going slowly, uh, but uh, it will reach a value below one in not too much time. Uh, now, one more thing about these C groups. You remember the modification that we made earlier to uh, sshd.service? Let me show it again. Uh, there we go. Memory max is four megabytes. That's also C group functionality. Uh, in Linux, on a process level, you can set the maximum amount of memory. And you know where else C groups are, are being used? In containers. We'll later talk about containers as isolated processes. And C groups are one of the important pillars in the working of containers, together with namespaces. But we will talk about that uh, in more detail later.